Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on histograms. Uh, so a histogram is a really good way of representing group data graphically. Uh, now it looks like a bar chart but there's a few key differences. Uh, so the main one is that we're plotting frequency density uh, rather than just the frequency. And so it's the actual area of the bars themselves that tell us uh, what the frequency is. Uh, and also we have to make sure that there are no gaps between the bars. So I mentioned frequency density. Well, what is that? Uh, the calculation that you need to use is frequency density is frequency divided by class width. Uh, so for the first one, uh, the frequency is eight and the class width is 20. So the frequency density is eight over 20, which is 0.4. So if we go through and perform the same calculation for each row, and the next one will be 13 divided by 10, since that's the class width here, which is 1.3, and so on. So you should get values of 3.6, 2, and 0 0.8 for the rest of the table. So as I've said before, we're plotting frequency density against the classes. Uh, so we need suitable scales to do both. So let's first of all look at the frequency density. Uh, the smallest value is 0 0.4, and the largest is 3.6. So we need a scale that's gonna cover pretty much everything from zero to four. Uh, and so I'm gonna use one small square, or sorry, one large square on this diagram. Uh, so that's five small squares across. Uh, that's gonna represent 0 0.5. Uh, so I'll, if I put the integers in, uh, we need two large squares to get to one and then so on. So we'll get two there, three there, and four there. So here I'm making good use of the size of the graph that we have. You always want to make sure that your uh, histograms or any graph really is as big as it possibly can be because therefore it's going to be clear. Now if we have a look at the length column, uh, the scale that we're going to need has to go from 0 to 60 or at least cover that far. Uh, so here I'm going to use uh, one, some, uh, one large square, it's 5 uh, because it's 5 little squares across. Uh, and if you count across, you should see that that's a suitable scale. Uh, so that, that's going to be 10 there, 20 there, 30 there, 40 there, 50 there, and 60 there. So I'm, use, I'm using the whole x-axis here uh, for our scale. And that's good because, as I said before, it's going to be much clearer if it's bigger. So now that all that is left is to plot the bars of the histogram. Uh, so for the first one, uh, the length category is from 0 to 20. Uh, so the bar width is going to go from 0, which I haven't labelled, uh, to 20. And the frequency density is 0 0.4. So uh, this is a test of my freehand drawing skills. Uh, make sure you use a ruler in an exam. So we're going along the line at 0 0.4 there until we hit 20. So that's the first bar. And then the second bar is from 20 to 30. And that's a frequency density of 1.2. Uh, so that's from the bar on the left to 30. And then up to 1.2 like so, and then draw the bar across. And as I've said before, the, uh, the bars need to be touching in this case. So the next one is from 30 to 35. Uh, so that's a much smaller bar this time, uh, in terms of width at least, uh, but it has a frequency density of 3.6. So we'll go all the way up to 3.6 there. It's gone a bit wonky. Uh, again, I'm not using a ruler, so excuse me for that. And then the next one is from 35 to 45 and that has a frequency density of two. Uh, so we'll go from 35 to 45, up to two, there we go. And then finally, the last one goes from 45 to 60, so that's got a width of 15, uh, so that goes right to the end, and that's a frequency density of 0 0.8. So we go right across to 60, along the line of 0 0.8. So that's our complete histogram. So you might be wondering why do we use frequency density uh, because it seems like a little bit of a strange concept. Uh, but frequency density is essentially just a way of measuring where the data is most clustered. Uh, so the highest frequency density is 3.6, that's the tallest bar. Uh, and that's because the uh, length class is quite narrow, so it only goes from 30 to 35. So most of them are around the 10 range, uh, that's a gap of only 5. Uh, but it also has quite a high frequency value of 18, considering it's only a small group. Uh, so that means that the data is very, very clustered in that group. And the same for the next group, which is, uh, although it's a, a weight class with a gap of 10, uh, the frequency is 20, so we still have quite clustered data. So those are the two highest frequency density values on the histogram. 
so there can be some quite challenging questions in histograms, so it's important that you get a lot of practice. You can do so with our online exam, it's available through our revision platform, and here you'll find loads of different questions to have a go at, all of which you'll receive instant feedback on, as well as being able to view the work solutions. And now this is really useful if you want to keep track of the areas that you're weak on, and find out where your strengths lie as well. So if you're interested, then you can click the link below and it'll take you straight there.